Hey guys, Rodmeg has been out for a while, and I wanted to take some time to remember all the content and time periods of the game. I used Realmai to look through the game's updates and wrote out the story of Rodmeg as I experienced it. Enjoy. Less than a decade ago, in 2009, a game making contest called the Assembly Competition was hosted and a very early version of Realm of the Mad God was entered into the contest. By the time the contest had ended, Rotmeg had gained popularity and placed third. The game was initially programmed by Wild Shadow Studios, and the designers of its unique pixel art were Oryx, Jeez, and Oddball. The Rotmeg soundtrack was orchestrated by the talented Craig Stern. In the beginning, Wild Shadow owned and managed Rotmeg, and it had its own share of problems. The servers were always crashing, and slow in general. In fact, in the original build, only 5 players could exist in a realm at the time. January 19th, they finally fixed the gods at spawn problem. I mean, I guess I'm glad that's not still a problem. February was a great month for Rotmeg. Not only were the Undead Lair, Pirate Cave, and Abyss Dungeons added to the realm, but demons no longer wandered into spawns. And as an extra bonus, they fixed the bug where you spawn into lava at the beginning of the abyss. That's pretty nice. By the end of 2011, all the classes except Ninja were created and all had their own unique special ability. They added methods to pay for in-game currency and various items to buy such as keys and cloths. The modern soulbound loot system was started and vault chests were able to be bought. Players with high scores of fame would get a red glow around their characters. In 2012, guilds could be started for 1,000 fame and have up to 50 members with four tiers of ranks. The Ocean Trench, Oryx's Castle, Forbidden Jungle, Tomb of the Ancients, Davy Jones Locker, Candy Lane Hunting Grounds, and Haunted Cemetery Dungeons were added to the realm. Also a very unfortunate decision happened in one of the most prized items in Rotmeg. That once highly valued Amulet of Resurrection was changed to the most stanky item in the game, the Amulet of Zombification. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Mostly it was used to kill AFK people on beaches, but then it was changed to an even more useless item. The game would also be bought by a stanky company named Kabam. Kabam sucks, and we'll talk about that later. In the year 2013, New treasures are now dropping in dungeons. The purpose is a mystery for now. Well, it turns out nobody did anything with those stupid treasures anyway, so I guess we'll never know. Moving on, the Lair of Draconis dungeon was released early by exploiters, and the loot was some of the best in the game. I took Kabam nerf the crap out of everything and made all the UTs into cheater gear. After the dungeon was correctly released, the gear was still garbage tank, but at least it had color now. In this time period, players were duplicating many items at the time, and the game's economy was obliterated, so Kabam hit the panic switch and soulbounded all untiered items. Kabam unsoulbounded all UTs for one final weekend before all UTs would be back to being soulbound for all eternity. The three epic dungeons, Deadwater Docks, Woodland Labyrinth, and the Crawling Depths were added to the game and probably the most remarkably good thing to happen to the game was also introduced. Pets were now active in the realm with five levels of rarity, common, uncommon, rare, legendary, and divine. In all the chaos of Kabam's hotfixes, a hacker named Swat Shrek, oh, sorry, Swat Sec 1, spawned many different bosses in the Nexus, killing many unsuspecting players. At the end of the year, the Shadows Dungeon was released, an endgame dungeon with some of the hardest enemies in the game. The year 2014, many dungeons were introduced in a few events. In March, Belladonna's Garden was released, followed by the Lair of Shaden in April the Puppet Master's Theater in October, and the Ice Cave in December. Janus was added as an alternate boss in Oryx's castle. 2015 was a very barren year for Rotmig. The only noteworthy things to update in the game were the glitchy friends list and the alchemist, which was removed from the game later. It was Kabam's last year owning the game, and it felt like the tinkerer always told me to come back later. 2016 was Dekka's first year, and they treated the game with good care. They started the event chests, which are test chests placed at the end of dungeons, being hosted by the event, which usually contain tokens unique to the event, and STs are UTs. 
they released some small changes which had a big impact on the overall running speed of the game. They allowed players to disable particles and ally projectiles. I will not mention which skins were released, but DEC has released more character and pet skins than ever in Romic history. The year of 2016 added three solid new dungeons including The Hive, Toxic Sewers, Puppet Master's Encore, and The Ice Tomb. In 2017, DECA made a boatload of new skins for both players and pets. They also added a monthly login calendar so players could get rewards for logging in every day. In November, the Mystery Shop was relaunched and the Alchemist who had been sitting in the Nexus, doing nothing, for two years was finally removed from the game entirely. Two endgame dungeons were released, called The Nest and The Lost Halls, the hardest dungeon in the game, with a massive amount of DPS needed to complete it, and a total of 11 bosses. This was a large step in the game, and probably Dekka's greatest accomplishment, at least for now. Thanks for watching, uh, consider subscribing. I won't do this content all the time, but I think it was fun looking back at how far Realm has come. Uh, yeah, so see you guys later.